Welcome back everybody. It is the 16th of October and this is Vlad coming at y'all. I wanted to create a video for you because um, I'm going to be heading out with the family later on today and uh, I will, probably won't be able to get to you later on so I'm doing it now. Uh, essentially a lot to cover today. I wanted to just kind of, you know, start doing a little bit of education on this channel because that's what this is. It's a journalism channel and um, we're basically chronicling what happened with the saga, uh, uh, you know, the saga of Rick and Morty here, um, it, what went down with the token, what went down with some of these other tokens as we discover um, different scams along the way, even if it's not the same people that were behind this token, um, I'm going to essentially just start calling out any uh, suspicious looking projects, that way people can be weary uh, of, your, of your project, if you are a copyright entity, first and foremost, uh, yeah, you're suspicious right off the bat, because you've taken somebody else's idea. Let's go over here and look what is considered a copyright infringement. As a general matter, a copyright infringement occurs when a copyrighted work is reproduced, distributed, performed, public display, or publicly displayed, or made into a derivative work without the permission of that copyright owner. So, yeah. I mean, anytime that you take somebody else's creation, and you slap it on your project without their permission in any way, shape, or form. Right here. Or made into a derivative. Right? Let's look up uh, derivative. Oops, I spelled that wrong. What's a derivative? Mm hmm. Differentiation is the action of computing a derivative, der the derivative of a function. So that's your math function, right? What is, let's give us a definition. This is not going to, there we go. Typically of an artist or work of art, imitative of the work of another person and usually disapproved of for that reason. So basically, yeah, it's something that is based on another source. Right? Like, the idea that I'm coming up with my NFT, it's my idea. It's not based off of anybody else's idea. It's my idea. My own original creation has nothing to do with a copyrighted entity. Anytime that you see a copyrighted entity over here, and the recently added coins, I would say scam. Until they come out and show you their face. I'd say scam, you know, um, I'm sorry, it's just, it's bad business, guys. Um, for those of you that think that, hey, this is a great idea to go start a project on a copyrighted entity without their permission, you're stupid, and I am done with this crap because it's getting people scammed, it, you know, like, it's getting people scammed, and we've got to stop it because eventually what's going to happen is they're going to shut it down. Um, who was it? I thought I saw... I think it was Glenn Beck. Do, 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 do. There's there's a lot of talk going on right now about cryptocurrency, guys. Not not in the, in the good way. Whoa! What just happened there? No thanks. How the Fed could force you into a new digital currency. There's a race happening now between the U.S. and China to see which power will develop a national digital currency first. All right? The U.S. wants to develop a sovereign uh, cryptocurrency that could give the government complete control. Most Americans don't realize how close that plan is to fruition. Wow, I didn't even know that. Glenn, Beck, or Glenn describes the probable journey. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, so... it's not exactly what I'm looking for. But essentially, yeah, like, they're, they're coming after. Um, crypto. I spelled it wrong. Yeah, 
Maybe it's this one. I saw it the last time. I'll look at it now. Essentially, like I said, the um, well, digital dollars. Oh man, it's not even going to be an article we can read, is it? I don't want to watch it. Okay. So essentially, you know, I would look for that, maybe watch that video. I'm not going to do it here now. But what I told you yesterday in, in, the, in the video about how our government here in the United States is asking for more power, the SEC is asking for more power, the Security and Exchange Commission, let's, let's look at them. Who is the SEC? <clears throat> for those of you that aren't in America... This is the Security and Exchange Commission, basically. It's a U.S. government agency that they look at all the, the trading, you know, Wall Street, crypto, whatever, to make sure that they're protecting investors. That's what I've been telling you all this whole time. Somebody needs to protect the investors. And if we as a community don't band together and do that on our own, then they are going to here in the United States. And so we cannot let that happen. If that happens, then we don't have any vote pretty much in what happens they're just going to come in and do it the way they want to do it and we're not going to like that situation i mean it's going to be really bad if they, they they get it this guy right here especially because this dude is a corrupt piece of crap if you ask me um i think his wife has ties to one of the big uh, wall street you know um firms and and he used to work for one of them I mean, you know they're, they're wall street people and, and he's in charge of this commission essentially that could try and crack down on crypto and i think that there's too much you know conflict of interest in my opinion i don't know why that hasn't been called out and you know it is what it is but if we were to step up as a community and take matters into our own hands and just say hey we got this we know this better than you guys let us take care of it we will but give us you know a year whatever then maybe we can put that off but i'm telling you it, we have bad things headed our way if we do not stop these rugs and this you know the scams to where people are um just wanting to hide behind a project and a big name use fomo to get people to invest their money and then dip out whenever the time is right that's just it, it, it's killing crypto there's so much potential here as you can see over here um change.org um i had a free promotion i guess because it got so many views already it's got 14 supporters 104 views 20 shares um these people here so far uh have essentially shared the video um or shared the video supported it um so thank you all for uh, your support there um Please, if you haven't already, come over, check out the petition. It's in the link below. And you can help get this started because if you, if you don't know, essentially, um, what the saga of the Rick and Morty token channel is, is it's, it's an ongoing you know journal of what I'm doing to make this right by everybody. Um, whenever I started my channel, if you're new to this, I'll, I'll kind of just give you a short rundown. Um, when I started my channel on September 20th, that was the first time I'd ever made a YouTube video, and I was doing uh, Saitama because I was an investor in Saitama, I still you know hold Saitama, and I got sick of telling all my friends like, "Hey, this is how you buy it," because they're like, "Well, I don't know anything about crypto. You know, can you help me?" And after like the tenth time, I'm like, "Well, let's just make a video and I can put it up on YouTube, and everybody can watch it." like a week and a half two weeks later you know it's got over 1500 views and everybody likes it and i'm getting tons of feedback enter rick and morty and i find it right over here on the recently added tokens on coin gecko and so i i throw like what was it about 200 dollars at it because like man yeah that's rick and morty and so normally i don't throw that much at a what i call a S coin, um, you know, and uh, I was like, this time, yeah, whatever, 200 bucks. I had a little bit of extra cash, and so I did it. And then I hopped into the Telegram. Somehow I got into the Telegram, probably off of this site, because you can, you know, 
right there click on the telegram link and I ended up over in the uh, the telegram in the group and that's where I ended up meeting Bob to the top and let's look over here I wanted to show you guys something like I said I've been blocked by the nightmare before Christmas because as far as I'm concerned they're scam and it's the same people as the Rick and Morty scam probably even in my opinion it's just my opinion like I said these uh, videos are opinion conjecture um, speculation everything else so docs Rick and Morty look oh look I'm blocked from them too I wonder why it's because you guys don't know this some of you don't know this but bop to the top is blunt with crypto always has been like somebody didn't know that one of my one of the people on my project did not know that yeah dadgummit now he's I can't even find him probably um but yeah remember blunt with crypto he, he's your admin now on the on the v2 or whatever uh, or on this one maybe I can't remember if it's v2 or if it's um, doxed and I'm trying to oh I wish I could find it because I want you all to like I said I'm trying to just give you all the truth I don't care about their projects I'm just getting people telling me that they're still lying about stuff and so I'm like oh okay well I'll at least expose their lies uh, what is it v2 Rick and Morty See if we can find them. Rick and Morty V2. <laughs> See if we can find um, the source here. Oh, here we go. But yeah, so essentially. This is one of the projects, I think, V2. And then one of the other projects was the other one I just showed you before. But Blunt with, with Crypto, he is Bob to the top. You know, same person. He's just changed his handle inside of Telegram. So now he's going by Blunt with Crypto. I wonder if I've actually... Um, probably deleted him. He's probably got me blocked, so... Um... Wait a minute, hold on. He's in my contacts unless he's deleted me somehow. I couldn't figure it out. Bop to the top. Uh, yeah, see, I don't think that... I think he's going by Blunt with Crypto in there. But, yeah, they're, they're lying. They're trying to cover their tracks. They're trying to hide their identities and change their names because they're a bunch of pieces of you-know-what. And it's whatever. I'm still here being me, being real giving me my face, doing something that they are not willing to do because they're cowards. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you guys want to continue to follow these people, by all means, I mean, it's your, your choice. I cannot stop you from doing that. But I can at least give you the truth, right? And that's what I'm doing here today. Um, looking over here, I did find a coin. It looks rather suspicious. Tails. It's got, you know, Reddit, Twitter, Telegram, all this. I haven't looked at the ETH floor. This one is definitely a lot more legit than what I've seen as far as the other scams. If this one is a scam, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it's suspicious because it's a copyright entity. Not only is it a copyright entity... When you load the webpage here, you know, eh, whatever. They've just taken a bunch of video game backgrounds and photoshopped it all together is all this is. And look here at the, up here at the, the logo for the website. That is weird. Why does it show Beavis <laughs> from Beavis and Butthead? I mean, this one's weird. Tails is on his own. Needs your help. Without Sonic by his side, it's time for Tails to shine. You know, I mean, it looks, it looks weird. It looks really weird. One quintillion. That's a lot of tokens. Just like Rick and Morty. Liquidity locked. Contract re uh, renounced. How long is your liquidity locked? I mean, did you lock it for 15 days like they did with Rick and Morty and then extend it out to six months? Because anybody can wait six months to go steal all the money or, you know, go collect the money they stole from everybody. 
no team tokens, no pre-sale. I mean, you are definitely like you're doing some, you know, right things, I guess you could say. But at the same time, you know, website launch, successful fair launch, dex listings, fast track. That right there. We've already went over this, guys. Let's look over here. I wanted to keep this up so I could get these links. Where do where do you discuss this in yesterday's video? There is no listing fee. Anyone claiming that they can expedite the listing process is a scammer. This is not Vlad saying that Tails is a scammer. It's CoinGecko that's telling you that they're a scammer because you cannot fast track. It's just not possible. So I'm telling you, in my opinion, Tails token is a scam. Until they can come out and show you their face, tell you their names, do something else. I wouldn't touch this project with a 10-foot pole. No way. Stop buying copyrighted entities. It, it, it has to be a scam. Like, they know it's not going to last, so they, they don't care. That's why they're not worried about it coming down on them later. Because they're not going to be here later. But you guys are now taking a project and running with it. And for you dox, dox people or whatever, good luck. Okay, you're you're definitely gonna get sued real quick as soon as your name comes out. So go for it, moron. That's why I'm not touching Rick and Morty. My own idea, you pieces of shit. Like you're unoriginal, you wouldn't know if a good idea if it smacked you in the face like a dildo coming off of a freaking, you know. I'm not even gonna keep on with that one. <laughs> Yeah, let's just put it this way. I live in a, in a place where, like, tornadoes are prevalent, and one of the, uh... There's, like, a sex shop that, that got destroyed, you know, during a tornado a few, like, a few years back. And they literally found sex toys, like, everywhere across the city. <laughs> uh, that just came to mind. But, yeah, you guys wouldn't have... If you, if you had an original idea, I mean, it would be one that you stole from somebody, obviously, because here you are still going on with this project. Like, what you should have done was what I'm doing. Wait a minute. Yeah, you could have banded with me because it's what I asked you to do. But no, you wanted to do your own damn thing. You acted like you know everything. And you acted like it's not going to matter about copyright. But I really think it is. Because what is copyright infringement? What are examples? Recording a film in a movie theater, posting a video, using copyrighted images, um, using a movie well, group. So that's just some weird examples, but yeah, those are regular ones. Um, to determine if an alleged infringement is fair use, courts consider the purpose and the character of use, the nature of the copyrighted work, the amount and subs, uh, sustainability of the portion use in relation to the copyrighted work as a whole. So right there, those number, number one, two and three and four I mean like, let's look at that one that's a pretty good one there might be more let's break each one of these down guys this is a this is an attorney right here no I don't want your ads you can kiss my ass for work to be eligible for copyright protection it must be an original work of authorship that is fixed in a tangible medium of expression original and possessing a modicum of creativity. Your projects don't meet any of that. Um, what's infringement? How can you protect your work? What rights does copyright protection provide? Certain exclusive property rights vest in the owner when copyright protection is secured. The right of re reproduction encompasses copying some or all of the copyrighted work. The right to prepare derivative works refers to the right to transform, adapt, or recast a work such as turning a book series into a television series. The right to distribute includes the right to sell, rent, lease, or lend copies of the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, finally, the right to display the copyright right includes display of pictorial works, graphical works, sculptural works, in addition to display works being performed. Okay. What if your works are infringed? 
if your copyrighted and registered work has been infringed, you can file a claim for copyright infringement, but you must do so within three years after discovering. Okay, blah, 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 blah. What damages can you recover? If a copyright owner is successful in proving infringement, there are three types of damages that may be recovered. Actual damages in the form of lost revenue or sales, additional profits of the infringer, and statutory damages. An infringer's additional profits can only be recovered when these profits exceed the copyright uh, owner's actual damages. Uh, statutory damages range from $750 to $30,000 per work for non-willful infringement and up to $150,000 for willful, which this is willful infringement. So yeah, look at that. $150,000 is coming at you guys on those docs projects. Good job, man. You're smart. Um, copyright owners may recover actual damages plus profits or statutory damages, but not both. So yeah, essentially, if you make any money off this project, um, they're just going to take it from you in, in, in copyright infringement damages, lawsuits, and all that good shit. So have fun. What defenses can the infringer raise? Businesses must be where there are possible defenses that may start blah, 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 blah. I really don't care. You guys can look at your own defense. Um... But yeah, like you guys are are facing copyright infringement lawsuits on your docs projects for sure. On the ones that aren't doxed, I mean, down the road, yeah, if, for you to ever be a successful thing, yeah, you're going to have to be like public or something. And at that point, you're going to be suable. And even then, I, I just, I don't know. I, I see them being able to shut you down some way, shape or form for for violating a copyright it's gonna happen they're gonna shut you down in some way shape or form i'm sorry guys i'm not trying to like tell everybody in the rick and morty projects that i i hope they fail i wish that you would rebrand the damn project to something else so it doesn't get sued how about that why don't you try having an original thought of your own and not just play off somebody else's freaking genius because you're not you're a moron, and all you can do is copy off of others. You don't lead anything. You follow, and you just... You, you shit out their work and, and slap your name on it, acting like it's your own. It's not... You're not doing anything creative. You're just stealing somebody else's work, and eventually it's going to come back down on you. So go for it. I'm not doing any of that shit anymore. What are smart contract audits, guys? So a smart contract audit is a security check done by cybersecurity professionals meant to ensure that on-chain code behind a smart contract is devoid of bugs or security vulnerabilities, right? So basically, you, you take your, your smart contract for your token, your NFT, whatever it may be, and you, you hand it over to these guys that are professionals, and it might cost you $5,000, $15,000 I've read, but they will go through and make sure that there's no errors and there's no hacking uh, vulnerabilities behind it. So why are people waiting until the last step to do it and, and then just skipping it? Because that's what you'll see here. You know, um, <laughs> it, it's insane that I was reading basically how long uh, almost half of the smart contract uh, on, on Ether, basically on the Ether. E e ecosystem or unedited you know or unaudited sorry um but you know unedited too leading to a growing number of hacks yeah that's insane i didn't know it was half smart contract audit is generally the last step in the journey of a smart contract or for the DeFi application is often left out why is it left out like you literally have a good product here and you're making money off of it why wouldn't you just finish the last step that only cost you like five you know ten fifteen thousand dollars and then you've got the security that you that you really do need behind this people are so damn stupid when their their money once they, they get it they're just like oh yeah i'm rich now bitch look at my lamborghini you know um if i ever have enough money to afford a lamborghini i won't own one let's put it that way i i have better things to spend my money on like helping people uh that's why i'm coming to you all right now <laughs> educate you band together put an end to this crap uh, hopefully stop you know everybody out for themselves um, smart contract cost development audit um, transactions you know there's all sorts of good information out there on the internet we all know this so I'm not really gonna break this down for you but yeah I don't know why smart contracts are the last step and I don't know why I mean I do because they, they cost a lot of money but at the same time 
yeah, I, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna have somebody do mine um, before I ever list my token and stuff, and then I'm gonna like once I can afford to have it done by a big firm, I'm gonna have it done again just to make sure. You know, like I'm before I'm ever selling anything, I'm gonna have a smart contract audit run on it for sure. It might be a fiver, you know, individual for the first go around, and then later on down the road when I can spend fifteen thousand dollars, I'll hire somebody that's a, a bigger name, but. Tails token right now, I'm calling it. You're a copyright entity. You definitely, you can Photoshop. Obviously, that's all this is, is just Photoshop. Like if we were to zoom in here, and I don't know if it'll let us because the, yeah, it's it's the way that it's, the website is designed. It won't let you zoom in on the banner or on the, the image in the background. But if we were to zoom in on that, you would be able to see that all they've done is go inside Photoshop um, and, you know, do a, uh, let's see, I don't know if I've actually got it installed on my, my computer here. I've got Photoshop installed on my, my surface and stuff, but you can go inside Photoshop and it will allow you to go through and basically just do free form around an image and you can just zoom in and yeah do it really precisely and that's all they did was take and cut tails out of an image and so this is just a photoshop website anybody could do it i could do this and i don't know anything about like i'm not all that great with photoshop i'm learning i just got creative cloud like a couple days ago you know i've used it before for a college class i had at north texas i just it was really basic, you know, how do you make like a, a banner or something like that, or like a postcard sort of kind of deal was the whole basis behind most of it. Um, like if we were wanting to promote our business, you know, we wanted to send out a business flyer in the mail and, you know, create a cool looking graphic or something like that. Um, so it was limited and it only took the one course, you know, it was just a beginner's course. And so I could do this though. I, I honestly believe I could do that just off the beginner's course I took it at college in college um, so I'm telling you guys this it looks too damn janky um, in my opinion I wouldn't go touch I wouldn't touch it with the 10-foot pole just wouldn't do it um, as you can see over here lots of hype 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 they've got 27 tweets out they just joined in October you know obviously it's, new, it's a new token I can't you know you can't dog them for just joining because they're a new token per se but at the same time you're just hype 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 and so until you have like you know audits and white paper uh, you know is out you've got a liquidity lock for like I don't know 10 years or something to where it's like okay yeah we're not just gonna walk away with your money in six months whatever I'm not touching your money your, I'm not sending any money into your project not mine that's for sure um, this this percentage over here I, you know if we if we look at this let's look over at the uh, I haven't even looked at any of the uh, the Dex tools let's see if I can pull up Dex tools for the other and then find tails as you can see the nightmare before Christmas yeah look diluted market cap this is that scam I'm telling you this is definitely a scam and I called it I caught him I got them before they got you all guys I think I did I think I really did I think I got the scam before they were able to take your all's money I mean I don't know we'll see if they want to dox themselves and they want to do like you know a big liquidity lock for like 10 years and everything else whatever go for it that's copyright material you're gonna get sued by Disney they'll come after you quick you mean you cut you touch Disney shit they'll come after you quick bro so <laughs> Peace, so you know, peace among worlds. Like you guys are stupid. I called you out. You blocked me on Twitter real quick. It's like whatever. I just caught on to your scam. I'm, I'm gonna literally, I'm gonna come over here, 
and look at these recently added coins like every stinking day now with this 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 whole channel of people so they know what to do and, and they can literally just never buy into your scams anymore because they know what to look for like that's what this whole channel is going to be about okay like i said this this is stupid um i don't know I don't know if I've got it's called the tails token with it uh, okay so it's tails tails I don't know if that's it though that's too many holders it looks like tails token that's it right there I'd venture to guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe. No, it's got too many zeros. We've got four, eight, ten zeros, and that one only had like six or seven. Let's see, seven, yeah, seven to or is there seven zeros there? So that's not it. Maybe it's this guy. Yeah, I think that's it. One, six, four. Yep, that's it. Okay, so we found it. And as you can see, already taking off profits here. Dipping in. And, and yeah, understandably, new projects have to take off as they develop their their stuff but man those are some big that's some big dips you know and the, and the coin it's already up to a diluted market cap of uh man yeah i don't know there's already a lot of volume in this coin that's insane 16 million wow this is what rick and morty look like essentially for real, like Rick and Morty hit a diluted market cap of 10 mil real quick. I mean, real quick. Daily volume looked the same. Pulled tails. Yeah, I'm telling you. I mean, this looks very similar to Rick and Morty. Dex score. We had a dex score of 99. This, I mean, this could very well be these same folks. Very, very, very well. I mean, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not, nothing on this channel is, is any fact. I don't know for a fact that this is a scam, but this looks just like Rick and Morty. Whenever I was behind the scenes as an admin on that project and I was doing YouTube videos for it and, and covering the Dex tools, this looks just like Rick and Morty did. Straight up. So, I don't know. It's up to you guys. I'll let you decide what you want to do with your money. I'm here to just kind of educate you where I can. I'll give you links here. There's the link to the petition. If you click on that, it'll take you right over. You can get that petition signed. Um, share it, please. We need at least 10,000 signatures on this, and then we'll get that Netflix documentary. If I can get the Netflix documentary, just to give you a recap of what I covered in yesterday's video, um, whatever the deal is, I'm going to take half of it, and I'm going to start the token. Um, Vlad to Chad basically whatever it's going to be called and we will have 2% of every transaction you know the slippage will be set to go towards you know 1% towards charity wallet and we'll, we'll do a, a rotation of charities of different natures and stuff like that we'll let the, the, the community play a part in deciding which ones we choose um, we'll, we'll have polls and stuff like that then the other wallet is going to be for paying everyone back in crypto that can provide a record of how much money they lost on an on a um, an initial investment in uh, a scam or a rug pool or something like that so um yeah two percent of every transaction on that, that that token essentially would be built into giving back um and then the rest of it you know the, the tokenomics behind the rest of it are really good i mean there's a burn there's um um, 
a buyback feature essentially uh, because I'm gonna do like a cross chain so th there's all sorts of cool stuff that I'm gonna do with that um, but I, I don't know exactly how it's gonna play out just yet I haven't I haven't hired the person to write the, the code uh, the smart contract and everything so until I do that I can't give you any for sure details but that's kind of where we've been talking uh, in the plans of it all going forward I, I rushed into this thinking oh I gotta get this done as soon as possible but I've realized you can't everybody else does the you know oh we gotta get it on there I'm not doing that I want it done right and so if it takes me two months three months to launch my token that's what it's gonna take me if I can get the Netflix deal here that would essentially help me uh, because I wouldn't have to rely on the NFT that I'm gonna be releasing uh, the NFT collection uh, if I have to, I'll use, you know, part of those, uh, those first NFTs that are minted and sold. Those are going to be, you know, maybe a certain percentage of them will be used to start the token. I don't want to do it that way because I'd rather the, you know, liquidity just stay inside of the, the NFT. But if I have to, to start the project, you know, then that's what I'll do. But yeah, I mean, essentially recap of what I went over yesterday, um, get everybody an exclusive nft it's going to be non-transferable it'd be your badge of honor you can't sell it you can't send it you, you know it's yours um shows people that you were an early pioneer of crypto and you got rug pulled you know and that hopefully 10 years from now there are there's no such thing with like people are like what's a rug pull in crypto because nobody you know they just don't happen anymore that's that's what my idea for this project can, is you know that we can do that but i get you all the exclusive nft on the day of the launch of my NFT collection on my website, there's going to be another NFT in that collection for sale. This one that you have, it, you know, like I said, it's non-transferable, it's not for sale. Um, and so there won't be any essential intrinsic value to it other than it's like cool uh, as hell and nobody else has it and nobody else can get it. You're the, the only ones. But then like our next, you know, uh, collection uh, piece will essentially be for sale on that. And then... Uh, eventually I'm gonna start the token uh, that was gonna pay everybody back it'll do the charities everything else um, so yeah I mean I've got great things planned but I can't do that all without money unfortunately it cost a lot of money to do all this I didn't realize how much it cost to, to have a smart contract created I didn't realize how much it cost to have a smart contract audited <laughs> um, the audit and the, the creation well the creation is not even the hard part that's not so bad it's the audit where I'm just like, damn, I'm going to have to wait a little bit for that one. Probably not like I'm not going to I'm not going to launch the token until I can do it. And so, yeah, it might take me two or three months until I can get that smart contract audited on the token because I'm going to launch the token with everything done on day one. The website will be ready. The smart contract audits will be done. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do a swap or something. I don't think I'm going to do a swap on this one. But yeah, I mean, essentially everything will be ready on day one one on the launch of the token it, it'll have its own separate website from my nft collection and when that website drops for that token you can click on it and it'll take you over to one of the exchanges um, to buy it but you'll be able to see the roadmap the white paper you're going to see the smart contract audit report um, everything that i can provide you up front on day one you'll see it all and you're gonna see my name, my face, my credentials, like my business address. I'll, I'll have a place that you can contact me personally. You know, it'll be a business uh, address essentially. It won't be my home or anything, but yeah, I'm gonna show people what crypto should look like because if I can do that and, and draw enough investors away from other projects because people want a safe investment, then yeah, people are gonna follow suit people want to make money off of this and so if there's not a way to do it except to do it like what Vlad's doing they're gonna have to either wisen up and follow or they'll be out the game after a little while but they just you know unless you keep on making bad decisions and bad investments I really can't stop anybody but I, I can educate you all so um, I don't really have a whole lot else to cover in this video. I think I've broken broken down a lot of stuff we went over. Like I said, you know, smart contracts, copyright infringement, um, 
We went over the fact again, there's no listing fee for coins, tokens, listings on CoinGecko. Anyone claiming that they can list a coin or expedite it is a scammer. So, sorry Tails, over here on your website, the fact that you even said fast track CoinGecko, CoinGecko themselves is calling you a scammer. Not Vlad, CoinGecko says you're a scammer. Hi, bye, bye bye, like get out of here with your trash. If you're a real legit company, a real legit project, prove it to us all. Show us your faces, show us your names, but you can't do that because you have somebody else's copyrighted work. Why don't you actually have an original idea of your own? And then you won't be able to, you know, worry about, you don't have to worry about being sued and they won't be able to come after you because it's your, it's your work, it's your original idea. What can they sue, right? For those of you that are in the Rick and Morty V2, um, for the, the Rick and Morty whatever, Docs, I know you guys watch my videos, so hi, how you doing? Bob, hi, how you doing? Uh, insane Crypto, Red Queen, all you guys. Um, if you want to really help these p people in the community, you're too coward to actually come forward and, and give your names, and you'd be stupid to. I mean, I understand that um, because you've got a copyrighted work that you're behind, and they're going to sue you as soon as they find out who you are. But if I were you, I would definitely, 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 definitely be looking to change the name of the project change everything about it it has to have no way shape or form tied to rick and morty okay if you do that they can't come after you do you understand now that's all you have to do you have to change your project it cannot be any way shape or form tied to rick and morty you see this shit over here on mine the saga of the rick and morty i can keep this here forever i will never have to change that because this is a journalism channel i am I'm literally, you know, logging, vlogging this whole thing. I don't, I'm not violating any sort of copyright infringement, but you are. Anything that you guys do, and you, if you make money off of it, especially, it's copyright infringement. There's no way, shape, or form of getting around it. They will sue you down the road. It will happen. Especially Nightmare Before Christmas. Like I said, Disney, they are too big, too powerful. They will come at you quick and hard and bend you over and beat your ass like a little kid you know that just got sent to the principal's office bring the paddle out and just red just welt your ass i mean you're gonna be hurting after they come after you because like you saw there one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for purposeful infringement it was only like thirty thousand for non like, if you were to accidentally violate a copyright infringement, you could still get you get fined up to $30,000 for just accidentally doing it. Pretty stupid now, huh? What you guys are doing. Because you willingly did it. And so now you're looking at $150,000. That's personally on you guys. Insane Crypto, Blunt with the Crypto, at, you know, Bob to the Top, whoever the hell you are. Tim Capel. That's who uh, Insane Crypto is, is Tim Capel. It's his name. You know, it sucks, guys. You, you put yourself in this horrible situation. I've tried to help you from even going there in the first place. I, I literally have been here uh, the whole time. Come along with me. Let's get this done. I can be your leader. We've got the right people. We've got the community behind us. Help me. I've been here the whole time. I, I I have sympathy for you. I feel I feel sorry for you. But you've made this bed, you can lie in it. Okay? You guys are screwed. You really are. Like I, I, I hope that you'll listen to what I'm telling you and you will change the project. Just completely change it. Stop what you're doing with anything Rick and Morty and come up with something of your own. Some sort of original idea of someone's own original work. Like it has to be something nobody else has already copyrighted because otherwise your project is doomed. One way, shape or form. Might be six months, might be six years. You're going to get sued. And it's going to cost you at least $150,000 a piece. That's just the, the fine. That's not what it's going to cost you to hire an attorney to represent you. 
That's just a fine. $150,000 fine. And that's just one. Who knows if they hit you with multiple. So this is Vlad telling all of you out there now that hate me. I've never been against you. I've never tried to lie and, and hurt you or ruin your reputation. I've literally only ever told the truth. And the truth hurts sometimes. I know. It sucks. That's why you need to stop running from it. Because it always comes out. That's another thing about it. One way or another, the truth always comes out. And so you can run all you want. It's not going to get you very far. Like I said, it might be six months. It might be six years. I have no doubt, though. Teleporter, that developer that was on the Rick and Morty project, something's coming his way. Bad karma, you know, it has a way of catching up to you whenever you've done something like that. That was more than 2,000 people. You know, I, that affected my family. I mean, it didn't really hurt my, my, my finances or anything because I don't play around with that much money, per se. But... I initially only invested like $200 in the project and I invested like a lot more than I would have because of they pulled me into the admin team um, so yeah like it, it, this one was definitely a lot more of an impact than most of the other ones um, that I invest in if, if something were to happen like that like I normally don't ever invest the most I've ever invested into a single project is uh, $300 that's it you know, I mean, I buy gas all the time, like Ethereum. Um, so, you know, I've spent thousands of dollars in, in Ethereum, obviously, for, for gas fees. But other than that, yeah, I, I've never spent more than, like, when I initially invested into Saitama, it was a $75 transaction. 25 of it was in gas. So I ended up with 50 bucks in Saitama. And that was in August. I bought on the dip, you know. And uh, that is over, it's worth over $1,000 now. At this moment, when I looked earlier, it was almost $1,100. My $50 investment is worth $1,100 now. And I've, I've definitely added more to that bag, obviously. But, yeah, like, you, you don't understand that some of these coins, you don't have to throw thousands of dollars at it. You can literally put 50 bucks in and make thousands of dollars. Now, essentially, yeah, if you were to throw $1,000 in it and then 10x that and 10x that, yeah, you're, you're sitting on a million instead of like a couple hundred thousand or something. So, yeah, you're, you're going to have more potential for um, bigger gains, but you've also got bigger potential for bigger losses, right? So the risk is higher in these situations where you don't have a face and a name behind the project. And I just, I don't, I don't want that going forward anymore. You're going to know my name, you're going to know my face, and you already know my face, and you're going to know everything about me, essentially, like, you're not going to know where I live and everything, I mean, you can try, I mean, like I said, it's legal for me to shoot people that come onto my property where I live, so, um, you know, target practice is always welcome, ex except for the, the cost of ammo is kind of, like, like, uh, kind of pricey, so, like, do me a favor and, like, tuck in a couple of, uh, like, five, five, you know, seven rounds, like, NATO rounds, <laughs> five, five, six, I mean, that's five, five, seven, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, I'm not scared of people. I'm really not. I'm not threatening anybody. You know, don't don't misconstrue what I'm saying here. Also, I'm not threatening anybody. I'm just telling you that um, people need to be public with their projects, and they need to be transparent. We need, you know, collaboration between projects, and we need to be professional about our our projects. Those three things, you're, you're going to hear me say it every time now. Transparency, collaboration, and professionalism. Three pillars of my project. You know, I want people to know who they're giving their money to i want to you know I want, I want collaboration between my team and other teams and everything like that um and i want to be professional whenever we launch a project i want the white paper done i want the audits done i want everything to be in place to where there's no chance for people to to lose their money not in, in, in you know the rug pull obviously but not just that but be, because we we half-ass the project, and all of a sudden there's a, secur a security vulnerability with a smart contract or something. We get hacked. I, I just I don't want any of that. So in, in order to avoid it, you, you, you can avoid it all together by just making sure that before you ever even list, you've got it taken care of, right? You know, it, it's simple. It really is simple. There is a simple solution to this, you know, to this problem. Like, you know, the answer is simple, but we don't want to accept it for some reason. People are still giving them money. 
um, on these projects because of FOMO. And like I said, I'm writing a book about it. It'll eventually hit the market. And I honestly think it'll be one of the best sellers that's for a long time because it's going to help people to realize that FOMO is not just inside the crypto sphere. You know, uh, you, you see it virtually everywhere. Um, it's how a lot of these big companies get you to buy their products. Apple, um, Samsung, Sony, they use FOMO. They use fear of missing out, and that's why they launch a new phone every year. And they get everybody, you know. The, the new phone, most of the time, is not that much of an upgrade. I don't upgrade new phones every year. I wait usually two or three years, at least. Sometimes I wait four or five years because the technology just hasn't really improved that much for me to warrant spending that much money to upgrade, you know. And unfortunately, they've gotten rid of some features that I, I liked, like headphone jacks. You know, I've got the, uh, the the Galaxy Ultra, and there's no headphone jack in the damn thing. So it's like, it sucks. You know, they have the USB-C, uh, but I've got some nice, like, freaking clips reference, you know, earbuds that are like several hundred dollars, and I can't even use them with my phone. kind of pisses me off. And I'm sure there's an adapter, you know, I know all that, but... Still, it's like, it's a headphone jack. I mean, there's no, with, surely with the advances in technology, there's not a way to keep the headphone jack and not use that much space on the freaking, the board, you know? But whatever. Um, but yeah, technology, all these companies, everybody uses FOMO. It's not only in the crypto space. It's in the Wall Street market. It's in everything, guys. Everything, everywhere. Fear. Fear is used to control you. Fear is used to get you to be impulsive. Fear is used to make you emotional. When you're emotional, you make decisions in the moment that you don't have time to stop and analyze. Okay, if I make this decision, well, what's the outcome? You know, what are the possible outcomes if I make this decision? You don't, you don't, you don't know because you don't stop and think about it because you're afraid of missing out and you're just like, ah, yeah, and you jump on board. That's what happened to me with Rick and Morty. And this is what happened to me, especially whenever I became an admin. I was like, oh, crap, man. You know, they're asking me for help. And sure, that's what I've been, you know, kind of essentially like doing here with my whole channel was trying to help people. And so I can really help people now. I was like, man, this is perfect. And then look what happened. <laughs> like, I feel horrible. Horrible. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm making it right. You know, because I thought that I, I had actually gotten in on something just fantastic. Absolutely Fantastic. And then it ended up being a scam. I'm like, oh my gosh. I had a, I'm just out of total loss, guys. So, but anyhow, um, I told you I was pretty much done with the video a while back. And I apologize. I do that pretty often because something comes to mind. And then I run with it for a little while. But I'm, I'm done for good now. And uh, I'll get this cut to you all. This will be the only video today. Um, I don't know that I'll do one tomorrow on Sunday or not. We'll see. I might take the day off tomorrow for Sunday and just relax because I've been hitting this so hard this week. The last, actually, since the 28th of uh, of September, it's been, I mean, more than 24 hour work days for me. I mean, there's only 24 hours in a day, but I mean, I've literally stayed up more than 24 hours working, um, 36 hours, 41 hours on certain, you know, one day, um, 28 hours just the other day. I, I put a lot of hours in, and it's time for me to actually take a few days off. I think, and so you might not see a video from me. Um, until like Monday again we'll see um, uh, if I see something come out and I really want to make sure that people see it before they get scammed or something if a new scam pops up I'll, I'll definitely get you a new video out as soon as I see it but um, for, for right now please if you haven't already like the video subscribe to the channel share this and get the word out get that petition signed we have to stop this because if we don't I already showed you and if you don't believe me do your own search on Google, wherever you search, DuckDuckGo, Bing, search for the SEC and crypto because they're asking for more power. They don't like the scams. They don't like the new investors getting hurt. And I'm, I'm right there with them. I just don't want them to be doing it. I want us to be doing it, okay? I want you to help me do that, please. Please. This number jumped right up to 14 like nothing. But it's stuck there since I made my last video. Not a single person has, has supported it since I, I made the last video. And so please, please, please. I, I've got over 100 views. Um, why are we not, you know, 140 views? Why are we not? Oh, I got three more supporters. Awesome, guys. You guys are doing great there. 
but yeah, the, we've got 140 views and only 17 supporters. So um, that's that's not a good thing necessarily. I, I really hope, like I said, you. Got, this is not about me. This is about me being able to help you, right? Nothing about me. I'm going to get rich off of my NFT collection. And I'm going to have to use that to fund the token, apparently, if I cannot get the... Uh, the Netflix deal, which I should be able to do the Netflix deal on my own, but it's just going to be a lot harder if I don't have a signature, you know, base of 10,000 people saying, I want this. If, if, if I have a, a petition that has 10,000 signatures and I can take that over to Netflix or whoever, they're going to want it. They're going to want to give me a million dollars, right? It's like, yeah, here you go. We're going to give you a lot of money because people want this. It's not hard to put the two and two together on this one, right? And so I need as much support for this petition as you can possibly give me. I know that you guys that have already, you know, voted, you can only get, you know, you can do it once. I, I can't ask them just, you know, do it every day. It's not how this one works. I need new people. I need nine, let's see, 9,983 more people to sign this, please. Please. <laughs> it's not about me. This is about you. This is about me getting every person who's ever and ever and, and rug mark cuban he got rugged i'll pay mark cuban back any person who's ever been rugged in crypto and can prove to me they got rugged in crypto the the amount they got they get lost you know like the initial investment not like okay yeah i spent a hundred dollars and then after a few months it was up to like you know i had ten thousand dollars and then all of a sudden i lost it all that, no, I want to know how much money you personally put into the project. A hundred dollars here, maybe you reinvested, you reinvested later on out of your own personal money, and it was five hundred dollars. Um, you know, whatever that may be, right? I'm paying back your initial investment. Okay, um, if you were to take and, and convert one of your cryptos over, I'll pay you back the value of the the, the token whenever you converted it. You know. There's, there's ways of checking that. It's a little complicated, I'm sure, but we can figure that out. And like I said, I'm not like, what was the day? I think I said the 14th. Like, I'm not giving anybody, if you get rugged going forward past like the 14th of October 2021, you don't qualify for this, this rug um, payback system. I'm sorry. I've had way too many videos out here exposing the truth about rugs and telling you to just stop until you know for sure. And so I'm not paying you back. If you get rugged past the, we'll even make it the 15th of October. I'll give you guys an extra day. I'm not paying you back like today, essentially. If you get rugged today, I'm not paying you back. You need to stop spending your money in, in places that you don't know where that person is at. And you don't know a, a, a name, a face, a, some place where you can go sue this person this this company whenever they they steal your money so that's on you guys you know i but i, I need your help i i can make it right okay so vlad let's see i don't think i've got anything else i will uh i'll get this out to you guys and um like i said this one's a long one one of my longer ones damn almost an hour long but man there's a lot to cover and i hope it's really been um you know a good educational video for you kind of showing you like what copyright infringement is what to look for um i go to the recently listed coins and if you see one that looks fishy probably is guys so i'll uh, i'll get this up to you you guys have a wonderful uh weekend here and uh, i'll see you guys probably on monday but if i if i see a project that comes up and i think it's a scam i'll, I'll do a video on it and get it out to you as soon as i can so all right love y'all as usual have a great weekend